Yeah, so thank you. So Troy, well, <clears throat> you know, Sam, I know you've been using CBQ for, you know, you guys have been using it for a long time now. Um, but, you know, so kind of looking back at the start, you know, why, why did Mogus decide to use CBQ in the first place? Sure. Um, so we, we decided to go with CPQ because we, we were using a custom quote system at the time. Um, it was programmed by a, a great programmer here. He's, he's still with us. His name is Stan. And so it was affectionately known as Stanline. And so all quotes were produced through Stanline and, and that's the way things were done for years. Um, but um, it, it was just a system that was, um, picking up the attributes. It, it really wasn't, there was no logic in it there and, and it wasn't really comprehensive. And it was very much based on Stan. Stan built it. He was, he's the guy that knew everything about it. So we uh, made the decision that we needed to move toward a tool. And when we did go to a tool, we wanted to have one that we could um, really build to be sustainable and that it could be supported by, by more than just Stan. And um, and so that's that's why we decided to go with, with a CPQ. Uh, we ended up going with with this CPQ, uh, yours, the the M4 CPQ, because we wanted it to do more than just sales rules. Uh, we looked at some, you know, we're, we're a Salesforce customer, and, and Salesforce really wanted us to go with their CPQ. But really, theirs was more, you know, a collection of items into a basket, and and we're we're engineered to order and we do a lot of things that are based on calculations and we, we wanted to be able to build that into the rule set and, and the M4 CPQ could do that as well as move into the manufacturing rules and the 2D and 3D. Now we're, we're not into the 2D and 3D automation yet, but it's, it's still something that we, we want to get to and just having the, the option to do it uh, was a big deal. Yeah. I, and I think that's something that we hear a lot too, is that we're on a system, it, it's been great for years, but it's hinged on one person. Um, and that obviously creates liability and have some other colorful, colorful stories of those people uh, getting disinterested in the products they're working on and uh, creating problems for the companies where they're the, the main guy supporting the system. All right. So, um, you know, talk a little bit about how, how do you guys use CPQ today? I know you touched on maybe a little bit of um, some of the things you guys are trying to do with it. but Sure. You know, yeah. yeah, so it, it is our primary quoting tool. So um, I mentioned we do use, we use Salesforce. So our, our opportunities start in Salesforce. Our outside sales team is managing in Salesforce. But whenever they create that opportunity, it also creates the the initial quote inside of CPQ. Um, and then also down into sight line. And um, when it gets to the actual vetting of the quote, what are, what are people wanting to purchase from us and um, all of the different requirements and specifications and all of the things that we have to do to, uh, for each one of the valves that we sell, all of that's handled inside of CPQ. So um, we update back up to Salesforce with the, maybe the, the, the totals and even I think some line details about what we're quoting. But all of the um, quoting is actually generated inside of CPQ. The different revisions are maintained in there. And then the actual quote package, we, we create the quote package from there. And uh, that's what we send out to, to our customers now. Um, and then once, you know, once we get to that final one that they agree to, then we just convert um, from the, the quote to customer order and sideline and then and then proceed along. So it's kind of it's right in there in between Salesforce and, and sideline. Um, but a key piece in the middle. Sure. Um, so uh, of the system again, you know, there's a million different things that it does, but what's what's your favorite piece of functionality or what is the thing that uh, you appreciate the most since implementing it? Yeah, the you know, I think the, the thing we like the most, I would say, would be dynamic lookups uh, because uh, we, we wanted to architect the system in a way that we didn't have to maintain it. Not that IT guys are lazy. We're just, you know, efficient. So we, um, with dynamic lookups, 
uh, my material, you know, we, when we're quoting a valve, we, we go off of the, the application it's going to go into and then the size, pressure, temperature that it's, it's going to be experiencing. And um, based on some of those criteria, we're going to have a, a list of materials that's appropriate for those specific conditions. Um, with dynamic lookups, I don't have to maintain that list of you know, I'm not building a pick list that says, you know, for for these things, these are the ones that can uh, that can work. Um, what we've done instead is we have a materials table that's maintained by our engineering group. So we're we're able to turn over the um, ownership of that uh, really advanced information to the to the department that that owns it. So the the engineering group maintains a materials table that has attributes on it that then I, as I'm going through picking size, pressure, temp, media, and the application, it's dynamically looking up and giving me a pick list of the materials that are appropriate for that particular um, application. So, but again, that's something I, I really like that part. And, and we use it all through our rule set, not just materials, but we're, we're, constantly using the dynamic lookup so that we're not maintaining pick list uh, manually so yeah I, I mean i think that's a perfect example of, of just some of the efficiencies that we're talking about too because then if your engineers they make changes or they're obsoleting parts things like that because it's dynamic the system's getting that feedback immediately so it's not a matter of hey engineering we issue that this is no longer available and then it's hand over to it and hopefully in the midst of all the other things that they're doing, they remember to go in and remove right. that and things like that. And so it, it reduces that time and that duplication. And, you know, and you're just using one example, uh, you know, we'll see that in pricing as well. And so I think it also back to your being reliant on one person, it separates some of that responsibility where these people don't need to understand how to write rules in the configurator, or even how to get into the system. They can keep maintaining information the way that they are. Yep. And I'm going to pick that up. Yep. And you mentioned pricing and actually that's, that's one part where we're right on the cusp of, of moving forward with is, is to, to add the pricing uh, in there. We, today we have a workflow that's built in there and it's great that we have a workflow that the configuration goes to our costing group who reviews it, puts in the, uh, the, the costing and, and pricing, and then it comes back to the sales group. So. Uh, great. But yeah, we're looking to, change that up a little bit. Perfect. So my last uh, question, you know, what is the biggest area of ROI that you guys have seen since implementing CPQ? Uh, I would say the, um, well, two things, I guess, re reduction in U-turns is what, what we, we would call it. Uh, basically, the sales team would would create a uh, create an order we you know they go through review everything and then we have a, a we've added a button in sightline i don't think everyone has it. it's called release to engineering and uh basically it takes that customer order line and, and releases it over to engineering to start work on it um quite frequently we would get we would get those come back to say well that doesn't work we can't you know these two things don't work together that material is not correct or that that end connection is wrong or, or whatever um since we we started CPQ, it, it it came up pretty quickly in in the in an executive meeting that the sales team said, "Yeah, we've we're we're we've reduced our lead time because we don't have as many U turns coming back anymore since we started using CPQ." So that was a fantastic one. But the other piece I would say is that in the last six months, I think we've had. Um, two, maybe three instances where we would have, we, we had a newer salesperson who was selling something into a particular country and um, they're calling us and saying, hey, we need to add this or, you know, the system's not letting me add this particular material or they're not allowing me to quote this particular uh, pressure class and, and, you know, for this size, why can't I do it? The system is broken. It's like, no, the system is constraining you into things that are outside of the specifications of what we can sell into that country or what, um, 
what particular pressure class that these valves are rated for. So it kept them within the lines, um, even on the sales side before it ever got over to the uh, to the engineering side. So we had to answer the question and research around well, why is it? Because we were questioning it, but really it was just CPQ keeping them in the lines. Yeah, there's, there's always some sales cowboys or cowgirls. <laughs> never happens. Never happens. <laughs> yeah, that was that was the last one. You know, so thanks Troy for spending a minute with us there to talk about how CPQ has brought value to your organization. Absolutely.